Hey everybody, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geekin' It, and for today's video, I would like to talk about the BWM-07 Metal Jungle Metal Mouse Scout by Transart. That is a mouthful. Here we have Metal Mouse still in the box, and let me get this out of the way. Transart is a third-party company which is basically making third-party masterpiece-style Beast Wars trans metal figures. So this is a third-party version of trans metal rat trap from Beast Wars. So what we have here is a really, really cool artwork of rat trap in robot mode in some kind of an action pose wielding his tail whip. You know, we see BWM 07, Metal Jungle, Metal Mouse, Scout. So I'm not sure if his third-party name is supposed to be Metal Mouse or Scout. Um, I'm a little, I'm, I'm <laughs> maybe they're a little just as iffy on that as I am, but I'm, I'm going to say his name is probably Metal Mouse. But for the purposes of this video, we will address him as Rat Trap. Anyway, so yes, nice artwork, beautiful artwork of Rat Trap in action mode. Uh, on the side, um, I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to be, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure. This might be the computer console on board the Axelon where the Maximals were, or maybe that's supposed to represent Sentinel, which was a scene in Beast Wars. But I, I don't really know what, what that is supposed to represent. It's probably something about the Axelon, the, the Maximal spaceship. But on the back, we see the CR chamber, which is definitely part of the Axelon. It is a repair, like rejuvenation pod that they would go into whenever they got damaged. And then on this side, it is kind of the same thing as the other side of the box except this is like there's no crack in the mirror there's no missing thing there's no uh piece of uh there's no girder hanging down so uh, again i guess this is supposed to be part of the axelon i suppose on the top we see junk metal jungle metal mouse by transart which is for some reason if you look at the front of the box it's upside down don't ask me why and at the bottom we just yeah stuff qr oh even that's upside down qr codes and stuff there we go, QR codes and stuff. Anyway, that really is enough of the box. Uh, my metal mouse also came with this sticker sheet of Autobot and Decepticon stickers. There's also some red Decepticon symbols, some purple Autobot symbols, and I'm probably gonna use at least one of these on my, um, on my BWM Covert Agent Black Cat, or also known as Covert Agent Ravage which I still haven't stickered him up with his Decepticon and Predacon stickers yet, so I will get to that. Anyway, that's enough about all that stuff. Let's take Rat Trap out of the box and see what he is all about. Once it's opened up, we see that some assembly is required for some of the accessories. No instructions provided. However, there's a QR code which takes us to a video. Good luck if the internet ever goes down or we're fighting for survival during the apocalypse. Personally, I would like paper instructions. And you see a collector's card of Rat Trap. Getting Rat Trap out of the package, the figure looks amazing. After getting some minor assembly done, such as the chrome hub caps and some of the weapons, he looks like he jumped right out of the old Beast Wars cartoon and onto my art table and already about to complain about something. The sculpting and paint deco on this figure is really good. The robot bits look shiny and metallic, as they should. In spite of being made out of plastic, the organic bits look really good, and some of that gradient paint detail look fantastic on this figure. There are so many forms and shapes to this robot mode. TransArts did a fantastic job with this toy. However, as much as I like this toy, as much as I think Transart put a lot of work into it, as, as much as I've been kissing this rat's ass so far, I do have a couple of complaints with this figure. For starters, if you're gonna make a toy as top-heavy as Transmetal Rat Trap, maybe uh, you should also factor in a stable heel so that the toy doesn't topple over. You see, gravity, the way gravity works, it wants to pull everything down. Rat Trap is top heavy. Now, that means Rat Trap is either gonna fall forward or backwards. Now, Rat Trap's toe area, his foot, his toe, is pretty stable. However, the heel has a hinge that goes up. 
and sometimes down. So a top-heavy toy weighing down, it forces the toy to go back on its heel. And um, if you do it wrong, he's going to fall over. And that is very annoying. Secondly, Rat Trap has a ball-jointed shoulder, which loves to just pop off when you're posing him or transforming him. Or you name it, it likes to come off. Now, it's a ball joint, so it's just it's easy to pop back in. However, it likes to do it during the transformation process, and it just makes the it makes it all very annoying. Now, we will open up that can of worms when we get to the transformation part. Thirdly, thirdly, Rat Trap has a pair of wheels on the back of his shoulder blades on his backpack. Those wheels have chromed hubcaps. Those chrome hubcaps are removable. And guess what? They come off for any reason. They are only held together by these tiny, like, three millimeter ports, and they just pop off. So as, let's say we talk about the heel spur. When Rat Trap falls over, the hubcaps just fly off. And so you have multiple problems going on at once here, and that's it, not fun. That's not fun when the figure just falls over and just falls apart on you. Now the hubcaps will be mentioned again when I get to the accessories, but this is a big nuisance which often tested my patience. Rat Trap comes with quite a few accessories, starting with his gun. It's got a clean paint job and its handle folds up. I haven't figured out why exactly. I couldn't find any storage space on the figure, but Maybe there is some, and I just wasn't being very observant. Metal tail lands, which has a very sharp plastic tip. These two gray plastic handles, which attach to the chromed hubcaps, which I previously mentioned, he holds them okay, but once again, the hubcaps just pop right off of the peg very easily. So there is one more little accessory that I kind of discovered here all on my own. Um, I noticed something weird under the arms. Now, if you see that, if you can see that, there's some details under the arms, which look like something out of the Thrilling 30 Rat Trap figure, which I'll be showing later. But one thing I noticed, so these arms have a little hidden compartment right there, and you can push out, you can push out Rat Trap's little, little thermal detonators that now he only used this in season one, but he can hold the detonator in his hand and he's got two of them, one in each arm. So he can just go like chick chick and then push that out. And it's just like fell off the old hot box or whatever it was that he said, you know. But you know, rat, it, this is a cool little feature because I don't even think Rat Trap demonstrated, I don't think he used these things in season two or three, but it's really nice. That there's that they're here for this uh, for this figure. So these are very tiny. They're very tiny. Uh, let's try. And, oh, rat trap! You keep falling over. Again, it's that shiny metallic silver. They look nice. They're not the. Oh, it's not the. It's not. Yeah, it's the same sculpt on both sides. It's symmetrical. Oh, and the hubcap fell off again. Anyway, we're gonna put this back in here. We're gonna close up the hands or close up the arms. Put this back on. Apparently, this one just likes to fall off, unfortunately. There are a few other accessories, which I will mention later. But for now, let's talk about the articulation. Ball joint at the head. Mouth can open and close, which is a really nice touch. Ball joint at the shoulders. Careful, one of the shoulders likes to pop off. Bicep rotation. Double bend at the elbow. Wrist swivel. And please be careful with the wrist, since the plastic in this area is very thin. Fingers can open and close with one hinge. And again, please be very careful with the thumb because that's even thinner than the wrist. Waist rotation, sort of an ab crunch. Ball jointed hips, can't kick forward that high. Can only go back considering the backpack is in the way. But if you do push the legs forward, you just <laughs> move the ab crunch, which I suppose it's a quality control thing. Maybe they could have ratcheted it. Maybe they could have had it lock into place in there. I don't know, but that is a thing. You know, if you move the leg, he's going to move the abs. Got a double knee joint. 
Yep, we have a duck. Look at that. It's a nice knee bend right there. Du Ankle pivot up and down and heel articulation. Assuming the backpack doesn't topple Rat Trap over, you can get him into a bunch of poses. I could probably get him into more poses with the display stand that's provided, but I haven't been able to figure out how the hell this works or how it attaches to him. I'd like to make a quick correction here. I recently figured out how to use the display stand for Rat Trap. You slot it in between the shoulder blade wheels and voila, Rat Trap can stand with the assistance of the stand. I do feel a little stupid now because I was so full of myself at the beginning of the video when I was complaining. However, the top heaviness is still an issue if you're a dummy like me and haven't figured out how to use the stand. Remember, there are no instructions that come with this. And when I watched the video provided by the QR code, I didn't see them talking about the display stand in that video. So for me, it was a bit of a mystery. And for comparisons, here we have Metal Mouse with the original Beast Wars Rat Trap. The original Beast Wars Transmetal Rat Trap, Thrilling 30s Rat Trap, MP38 Plus Burning Convoy, Trans Arts Covert Agent Ravage, and lastly, Trans Arts Transmetal Megatron. Transformation is a little bit complicated, and kind of being the clumsy oaf that I am, I had to be very careful with it. After watching the video provided from the QR code, I was able to follow along. But I'll be frank with you. This is a transformation which, much like Rattrap as a character, likes to fight with you. This transformation was almost antagonistic because if you misaligned something, if you rotated it the wrong way, nothing about this transformation would work. Or the hubcaps would fall off. Or the fucking arm would pop off the socket. Anyway, you will get frustrated. So please be careful and most of all, be patient with it. It's a transformation that I think I can learn to get used to, but it's also really easy to screw it up. One funny part that I would like to point out, though, is that the rat shoulder pads aren't the actual beast mode head, but they tuck underneath during the transformation. There is a rat head underneath, which kind of folds and flips out. Definitely some sleight of hand going on here. A little bit cheating, but, you know, it worked. The beast mode is a rat mode, hence the name Rat Trap. Unlike the robot mode, which has both robotic and organic details, this rat is all robo, and I am loving it. Again, much like the robot mode, the beast mode looks like it jumped right off the TV screen and onto my table. The rat mode is mostly solid. The belly area is mostly thin plastic, so just be careful about things coming untapped. The robotic sculpting on the beast mode is really nice. Simple, but nice. The chrome plastic is so good, and I'm trying not to get my fingerprints all over it. I could wear the provided gloves that came with it, but they make handling the toy a tad difficult. The head sculpt has so much personality. The eyes are painted in this metallic green. I love the expression on the face, which is very similar to the old Beast Wars toy. And the mouth opens and closes, which I was not expecting, and I totally appreciated that. For beast mode, there is a decent range of motion for the toy. The head can look left and right, up and down. Ears can wiggle a bit, but that's mostly due to the transformation, but it's still there if you want to use it. Front legs have ball jointed shoulders, hinge at the elbow, and a ball joint at the ankle slash wrist, whatever the front paws are called. Hind legs have smaller ball jointed areas uh, up under the wheel, double hinge, and a pivot at the foot. The tail is made of soft rubber, but with a metallic wire inside. The tip of the tail can articulate as well. However, it has a very sharp point. Sometimes I think I prefer the beast mode over the robot mode. It's more compact and the weight is a little bit more evenly distributed, making the toy more stable than the robot mode. Here he is with Beast Wars original, I guess you could say G1 Rat Trap, Thrilling 30s Rat Trap, Original Trans Metal Rat Trap, Masterpiece Burning Convoy, and last but certainly not least, Trans Arts T Rex, aka Trans Metal Megatron. And I have to say, uh, aside, aside from the, the absolute size of these two, Trans Metal Megatron was actually easier to transform than Rat Trap. But then again, with Rat Trap, there's a lot of smaller pieces, a lot of uh, uh, things that have to be tucked away into that Rat Trap mode, where, I mean, half of Megatron is just still here. 
But yeah, this transformation was about a about a hundred times easier than rat traps, which is just weird. Now there is one more element to cover on trans metal rat trap, and that is the vehicle mode. This is very simple. Fold up the front legs for the wheels, fold up the hind legs, be mindful one of them likes to pop off and it's easy enough to reattach, extend the wheels and peg them onto the side, unfold the exhaust pipes and voila, you have a rat with wheels. Not much has changed aside from the legs being folded and the wheels being out, all you have to do is just add the exhaust flare accessories and it looks like Rat Trap is speeding away as fast as he can. In his hot rod rat mode, he rolls pretty well. Really well, actually. Here is Vehicle Mode Rat Trap next to the original Beast Wars Vehicle Mode Rat Trap. And here he is next to the Trans Metal Megatron in Flight Mode. Well, that's it. That's all I got. Metal Jungle Metal Mouse, aka Trans Metal Rat Trap, looks great. It feels good. You can tell they put a lot of work into it. Very cartoon accurate and mostly stable. Yes, this figure is very nice. However, it's not without its flaws. The hubcaps are very loose and will fall off the toy with the slightest of movement. His stability is pretty bad without being propped up by the display stand. And the arm popping off can be a real nuisance. I'm happy to have this toy in my collection. I, I really need to get some more Masterpiece Beast Wars figures, uh, along with my slowly growing trans art collection too. I really want to get a full Beast Wars cast, whether it's official or third party. I'm looking for it. I think I'm I think I'm gonna get some of the older ones that I skipped out on before. Well, that's kind of it out of me. Uh please like, share, subscribe, please comment at the bottom. Do you have this figure? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you agree with my complaints or my compliments of the figure? Let me know. I'm Jim Classic. You have been watching Geekin' It, and I will see you next time.